Hello, and welcome to Nightmare County. I'm your host, Rando M. Ghoul. Over the past week of me not making videos and such, and traveling, I decided to uh, make a video on what really got me into horror, as it is a question that I'm asked a lot. Um, I'm constantly asked what films got me into horror, what age uh, I was that got, when I got into horror movies, or um, and then sometimes I'm even asked what is a good set of horror films to introduce to people who are younger, uh, well kids especially. And I'm always, I'm always iffy on that because I think everyone's different. You just gotta trust yourself and what to introduce to people and everything, especially children. But um, I'll never forget when my dad came home, came home when I was uh, five or six years old, and uh, he came home with a bunch of VHS tapes. And this is going to show you how old I am. He came home with a whole bunch of VHS tapes, a lot of westerns, some action movies love stories, you know, so on and so forth. But he came and introduced me to a whole bunch of universal classic monster movies. And my five, six year old brain, five to six year old brain, was amazed at what I saw. Because the artwork on the VHS covers was just amazing to me. And it was also at this time when universal classic movies were reintroducing a bunch of the uh, classic monster movies back onto VHS, repackaging them and everything. And they all come with this kind of artwork. Which to me was just, I would look at that cover and I couldn't, I, I mean, I had, I had never heard of the monster movies at, th at this point. Um, so just looking at that cover, I was like, oh my God, Dad, we gotta watch this. this is, we gotta watch this. So he let me pick out the first one that we watched. The first one, the very first monster movie I ever watched that I can remember was The Ghost of Frankenstein. And what's funny is, like, we didn't have any of the original Universal Classic Monster Movies uh, films, like the first films, like uh, the Frankenstein, Dracula, um, The Mummy. We had all the sequels. <laughs> so I grew up seeing the sequels first and loving them. So my my love for the Universal Classic Monster movies is a little bit different than most people who watched the the, uh, the first films before they went to the the, uh, the sequels and everything so on in the series. So I saw Ghost of Frankenstein first, and to this day, to this day, I still love that movie so much. It is the one film. I mean, it, it made me uh, fall in love with the uh, Frankenstein monster. I always thought Lon Chaney's uh, version of Frankenstein was pretty good. I mean, I had nothing else to base his performance of Frankenstein on because I'd never seen Boris Karloff's uh, Frankenstein or um, Glenn Strange or Bela Lugosi's. So I could not wait to watch this movie. We put it in, and it was like the most amazing thing I'd, I, 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 was, I had ever seen. It's in black and white, and I'm just enjoying it. I'm eating this up. And I always felt so sorry for the Frankenstein monster. I, he's, you know, he's this creation that has been brought into a world that doesn't want him. And I think the reason why I always kind of, reason why I always liked the Frankenstein monster more than all the others, is because, you know, you kind of, you kind of gravitate towards what you feel like in life. And when you're, and you know, I, when I was small and everything I was always a little bit taller than everybody else I was real clumsy I kind of sucked at sports because because of that I couldn't see because uh, at the time we didn't know that I had a horrible stigmatism and um, I was just having all these problems as a, as a child and I mean you kind of get made fun of or other people look at you or no one wants you on their team you know it's because you feel like you feel so like so far out in left field, as the saying goes, and you just don't feel like you're a part of anything because you're not. And even I mean, it doesn't matter how many people you have in your life that love you, your family, and everything. It's the social experience that you get to to have with the outside world that really kind of affects you. I mean, it's, it's a good thing that you have a family that you come back home to who do who does love you and everything. But it's that experience that you feel when you go out that really kind of changes or warps or 
changes your it changes your your mind, I guess, or morphs your mind into something to where um, I can't think of the exact words I want to say at the moment, but it morphs your mind into what it is at the, at the moment. I mean, it, might, it changes over time like anything anything does, but at that time, I felt like a Frankenstein monster. Here's this dude who everyone fears him because he's big, he's he looks strange and everything, and he's just, he's the ultimate outcast. And um, mind you, he it, he does have a murderous brain inside of him and everything, but I digress. Um, it's just you know, but the, if I think that's why I gravitated to Frankenstein the monster so much, and I love those series of films, and I love Lon Chaney's version of the Frankenstein monster. I thought it was I, don't know, I just I loved it. The other reason why I love the Ghost of Frankenstein so much is because I love Bela Lugosi's Igor. Igor. Uh, <laughs> that was a horrible, horrible way. But I would sit around and I'd practice. I practice. I really would. I would try to talk like Bela Lugosi's Igor so much. And uh, walk around. And my dad, I was real bad about my parents. They would try to talk to me. If they asked me to go do something, I would act like Lugosi's Igor and respond to them and everything. It was just walk around with the, the humpback and hunchback and everything. Humpback. And um, just to get a laugh or make myself laugh, and you know, and that's I think uh, Ghost of Frankenstein has just—it's always held on to me. I always enjoyed them. I, I love this is where they kind of—I uh, love the music they used in it. It's the music they would use probably in all the other uh, monster films that they made at the time. Uh, and I just fell in love with uh, the series. And of course, I would go on and watch The Mummy's Hand, which is without a doubt probably my second favorite sequel to a movie ever because I love the way that Universal blacked out the eyes for um, Tom Tyler as the uh, as the as the mummy and everything and I mean the reason why I like the mummy's hand so much is because that's the one movie where you actually get to see the mummy do a whole bunch of stuff the entire movie not just for uh, like two minutes where Boris Karloff was and that awesome makeup, um, and no one, I mean, that's all you got to saw of it was for like for two minutes, and the rest of the movie, he's, you know, normal old Boris Karloff, which whom I love, but Imhotep and everything, is, uh, he's just normal looking. <laughs> that's, and so I always enjoyed uh, Boris Karloff's, I mean, I always enjoyed Tom Tyler's Mummy a little bit more. I mean, guaranteed he didn't get to put any character into his mummy because he's just supposed to be terror terrifying which and when you black it when the way they blacked out the eyes it really worked and and i think that's why i kind of enjoy the uh the remakes the uh the brandon fraser mummy films because if you go back and you watch the the very the very first mummy in the mummy's hand and you and if you watch the comedy that uh is used in the mummy's hand and then you go back and you watch the the most recent, uh, not the most recent, but the Brandon Fraser mummy films. They really go together. It's like the the com the comedy from the Mummy's Hand bled into the Brandon Fraser starred uh, mummy films, and it really works. And I think that's why I love the Brandon Fraser mummy films so much because they remind me so much of the mum the Mummy's Hand in a way. But um. You know, that's just me, my opinion, putting those two things together and everything. But, but yeah, and but yeah. So my second film that I ever watched was the mum. That second movie we watched was The Mummy's Hand, and I freaking, I freaking loved it. I like, uh, and it made me a fan of uh, George Zuko's. And I mean, an actor who never was big, but he was always a good actor, and he was always someone you could rely on to play mad scientist or or something. He's he's always played the bad guy. But I always enjoyed enjoyed him in whatever he was in. But um, and he's one of those actors that no one ever brings up. That uh, you always hear about Boris Karloff, Lon Chaney, Bela Lugosi, uh, so on and so forth. But you do not hear about some of the other people who starred in those roles, who were a prominent Universal Studios character actors. And George Zuko is one, and always. I would love for someone to really do something on him. Actually, I might do that just to be random. 
uh, kind of touch on some of the movies that he's done. In fact, behind me there's a book called Universal Monsters that does that has a little section on him which I really appreciate. And uh, I'll put the uh, the name of the book and the author and everything down in the description later on because uh, it's probably the best book on Universal Monster films that I've ever read. But anyways, um, yeah, and then. The third film that we watched would be The uh, Invisible Man Returns, which would mark my third favorite Universal Monster film, and and due to his voice, would make me, without a doubt, the one of the biggest Vincent Price fans. I'm not the biggest Vincent Price fan ever, but I am a huge Vincent Price fan due to The Invisible Man Returns, and it was simply because of his voice. A movie... I mean, every time I heard his voice, I was like, that guy has, like, the best dialect, the best pronunciation of words that I've ever heard in my life. And I was going to try, I, man, I would sit there and try to sound like him, but I'm just too damn country in order to sound as awesome as Vincent Price does. And it'd be years later that I would end up uh, seeing um, Vincent Price's other films with Roger Corman. Um I would actually, actually, my second film, Vincent Price, that I ever saw would be House on Haunted Hill. And that would kick off me falling in love with William Castle's movies. Those, uh, others, the, especially his, the era where he had a, a gimmick to every movie he made. That I really enjoyed those. Those are just fun. But, um, back to Universal Monsters. Yeah, and then, uh, I would go on, obviously, The Revenge of the Creature from the Black Lagoon, which I love. I mean... I mean, when you go back and you see these movies and you look at the makeup and the, um, the effects that they did uh, for that time period is just, I mean, I don't know, I mean, a Creature from Black Lagoon was, you know, it's 50s, but it, it was awesome. It's like, to have, to, just to have a costume like that, I would have granted these guys like Academy Awards for special effects every single time because to me that's just amazing what they did. But, um... But yeah, I mean, uh, I, my dad truly helped me fall in love with the Universal Monster movies and horror films in general due to that because of those movies. And and I would say that if you want to introduce horror films to children, that those are the best movies to go with. I would say go back and find all the classic, I mean, you can find them on Blu-ray in the big old bundles now. And not just the uh, the major Universal Monster, Monster movie films. You can find stuff like The Raven, The Black Cat, uh, Horror Island, some of the lesser B-grade Universal uh, films that they made. Um, but those, to me, are the best films to introduce to someone between 5 and 8 to 10 years old because they're not graphic. They offer amazing, a great act. They offer, every single one of them offers great acting. Hands down, no matter what, you're gonna in those old Universal Classic Monster movies, it didn't matter how low budget it might have been at the time, they offered fantastic acting, fantastic special effects. And you know, they for kids with short attention spans, they I mean most of the films clocked in at what, 72, 78 minutes long. So I mean, you can't beat that either because it's short enough. And pretty much most of the time, other I would say the most of those films pretty much kicked off right at the, from the get-go with their monsters, oh, especially the sequels. Uh, and I would say probably the sequels are the better films to get young kids uh, in tuned into uh, the classic horror films because they pretty much introduced their monster right from the get-go, and then it goes into the movie. And then you can go back and introduce the first film, which most of the first films were more philosophical, I would say, than the sequels, which is usually the case with any type of horror film that's ever made and the, the subsequent sequels that are made. But uh, I would say go back and uh, start with the sequels of the old Universal Classic Monster movies. I would say uh, if you want to, you can kick off with uh, like Ghost of Frankenstein because you have uh, Bela Lugosi as Igor, Lon Chaney Jr. as the Frankenstein monster. You have um, Sir Cedric Harwick. I think I said his name right. And... Um, there's a bunch of good actors, and then you got you go on to uh, Frankenstein meets Wolfman, House of Frankenstein, House of Dracula, which to me were those uh, <coughs> when you think about it, 
I mean, and now they try to do the uh, Dark Universe here not too long ago with uh, Tom Cruise's The Mummy, and they were going to try to feed off into uh, other films. And then everyone likes to talk about how Marvel or some of those other films started the whole sh multi uh, shared universe uh, film cycle, but Universal did it first. I mean, their all their monster films took place like in the same universe, so they they really they really did you know do something before anyone else did and I hate that people have forgotten that but I'm just rambling I just want to talk to, about uh, what really got me into horror and uh, especially my first my, the first time I ever watched and something I'm still a big fan of and I I know I do I try to collect uh, Universal Classic Monster stuff as much as I can when I have the money because some of the stuff is not cheap but like I said, if you want to get kids into horror, this is the best way to do it. In my opinion, the best way to do it. Introduce them to these old black and white classics. Um, I, another funny story is that as a kid, you know, growing up on... I'm, I mainly grew up on old films. You know, back in, when I was little, we all I could watch was like three channels on television. So I didn't really get to watch anything new. So my dad would, go, when we go to the VHS store and rent movies... Uh, I saw mainly old films because I wasn't able to, you know, rent rent anything. So my dad would just rent whatever. Every now and then we get to pick and everything. And my dad wasn't going to let me at five, six years old rent, you know, Friday the Thirteenth or Nightmare on M Street. But uh, he 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 would get me. I saw mainly saw nothing but old films. So I kind of grew up loving uh, classic cinema. So whenever he brought these home to me and I saw them. I, I thought this was the most amazing thing, and I wanted to show my friends so much. And you'd be amazed at how many kids, other kids who have, <laughs> let's just say that most kids don't want to watch an old black and white movie. I would take these to uh, church. We'd have a sleep ins at, at the church that I went to growing up and we would have these uh where we all stay the night like on a uh, Saturday night or Fridays Fridays and then Saturdays we'd get up and you know, we'd have church and um so we're having a uh, sleepover basically at the church and you know people can bring stuff for everyone to watch and I would always bring these uh the classic Universal Monster movies because I wanted people to see them so bad I was like you gotta watch this it's so awesome and here I'm amazed at what I'm seeing on screen every single time I watch them. And I'll try to mimic Frankenstein's walk, uh, the mummy's hand, or uh, Bela Lugosi, the way he does his hand, his, his arms outstretched and such. And um, <laughs> none of these kids were eating this up. I was the only one. And I mean, yeah, there were some of them who thought it was awesome, but there was a lot of her like, we don't want to watch this. And some of it, it even scared some people. Especially the mummy for some. The mummy, I, I would say, is the one monster film, one monster in the series who people like to make fun of, due to how slow he walked and so on and so forth. The mummy's hand, Tom Tyler's mummy, had to have been the scariest one when it came to uh, scare factor, with uh, especially with the, little, the, the kids of my age and such, because he was just menacing. I like. And it, it it worked. So, like I said, I mean, not every kid's not every kid's gonna like these old black and white horror films. But if you want to start kids out on something that's relatively easy and accessible, I would say the Universal Classic Monster Films are the best way to go. Or you can probably choose any of the old black and white horror films from that era. Because I mean, there's I mean, Universal wasn't the only one uh, pumping out films at the time. They had the best quality, I, I do believe, but there are many other good studios or good horror films coming out from the studios back then. And most of them you can find in like a $5 bin at a Walmart. Or you can order them online from like Mill Creek or whatever. They're always in those bundles and stuff. And there's a diamond and rough in all those packages or box boxes full of movies and stuff. So you can always do that. But I would really, I really do push for people to see the Universal Classic Monster movies first, and then you go on from there. But uh, I might do a, I might do some sections where I just talk about Boris Karloff, some of his best movies, about Lugosi, Lon Chaney, George Zukos. Uh, just really 
try to I would like to talk about some of these horror icons to me they're horror icons they're all icons they're all legendary the the ones that people really don't know anything about or know anything about they might have saw him star in like 10 movies but they don't know his name because he wasn't the main villain he wasn't the main creature or, or whatever but there were, there are quality actors who deserve the same respect as everyone else in the movie and they were usually the villain so I would like to do that I, would, I think that would be a little bit different something a little bit uh, a little bit cooler um, so who knows uh, this was just really a quick video I wanted to do I think it's something out there for people to, to hear uh, and watch but uh, I might I might go into a whole Universal Monsters or po poverty poverty row films era because uh, they really hired a lot of the uh, the ex uh, Universal Studios uh, character actors and such and um, that's something I like to do but anyway uh, I want to thank you for watching this video and I hope that you enjoyed it and everything me talking about it. Uh, some of these old Universal Classic Monster movies as a uh, I think almost every horror fan respects them in some degree or loves them as much as I do but if you ever want to talk about them you know just comment in the section below hit me up on my Instagram and Facebook at Nightmare County as I would love to talk with any of y'all so thank you and um, don't be a stranger and tune in <laughs>